Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Vice President and CEO at GE Healthcare, John Flannery. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm John Flannery, and I have the privilege of leading our healthcare business. You know, I'd say of all the massive challenges that GE's taken on over the years, light, flight, energy, perhaps healthcare is the one that has the most personal impact on all of us. Healthcare is a universal language. We know what it looks like, we know what it means, and we know why it's so important to everyone. The outcomes that we're able to be a part of in GE Healthcare really are nothing short of miracles. Saving the life of a preterm baby who weighs less than a pound, guiding the hand of a physician to place a stent perfectly that's smaller than a tic-tac, teaching the human body to heal itself through cell therapy. These are amazing things to be part of. So in many ways, healthcare has advanced by leaps and bounds over the last few decades. We've developed a lot of new science, new drugs, new insights, but it's still been plagued by a significant problem that's weighed this down for a long time, and that really has three basic components. Cost, quality, and access. In terms of cost, the cost of healthcare is out of control in many regions around the world, but nowhere more so than in the United States, where it's approaching 18% of GDP with no better outcomes to show for it. That's just unsustainable, and that's a big problem. We still have a long way to go on quality. A large number of patients still misdiagnosed. That creates a lot of risk for patients and a tremendous amount of waste in the system. That's a problem. And then there's still 5.8 billion people around the world who lack access to advanced health care. One million babies a year born with no access to even basic neonatal care options. That's a huge problem. And no one's really been able to address these until now. And if you look at the transformation that's taken place in other industries, from a rotary phone to a smartphone mobile environment, from a horse and buggy to a ludicrous mode electric car, that's the kind of transformation and leap that we can make forward in healthcare right now. So how do we do that? It's by combining the digital with the industrial, the software and the hardware, and especially the machines and the learning. This is not some aspirational dream. This is a transformation in the industry, and it's happening right now. And I know that in just a few short years, we're going to look back and sort of shake our heads at how healthcare was done prior to the digital health revolution. GE has the minds and machines to lead this change and to help us make this leap in healthcare. We're the clear leader in medical imaging, with over a million machine installed base, 16,000 scans a minute coming off of our footprint. It's an unmatched global footprint. Our 100 year history in the industry has given us deep clinical and operating understanding and the trust of hospitals and doctors. We're really the partner of choice with health systems, with national governments, and with innovators in digital health around the world. So when you think about how digital can affect healthcare, I'd like you to think about it in two simple ways. First is how we improve healthcare at a patient level. And second really is how do we transform the efficiency of providers everywhere around the world. In terms of a patient level, let's look at what's possible now in cardiac imaging. The technology that you see on the screen here is called VeosWorks. It's a new MRI software that we developed uh, in conjunction with Arteris, a Bay Area startup. It's a never before possible 4D movie of the heart that can be viewed from any angle. It captures and analyzes more raw data than any human doctor could ever intuitively interpret. And with this software, instead of having multiple pictures of the heart at different points in time, we can visually inspect the heart as it's beating. It's a virtual reality exam of the heart where the clinician can interact with the data and gain new insights. What's the impact of something like this? MRI exam times cut by two-thirds. Image processing that used to take hours 
now is done real time in the cloud. That is real productivity for the system and potentially a much better patient diagnosis. VOSWorks especially gives cardiologists a new and very powerful tool for assessing blood flows and the functioning of the heart. This matters a lot. These doctors are trying to decide which patients need which treatments, including whether to have surgeries or not, on the basis of these measurements and information. So better information, faster, means better outcomes for patients. We're seeing the positive impact that digital health can deliver at a patient level, but also for communities. Effectively managing the health of communities, it's also called population health, it really requires several things. First is the ability to see a patient's full picture of their overall health status. And then next is an analytics layer that helps pinpoint what that patient's risk profile is and generate a personalized care plan for that patient's condition and then do that for millions of patients at a time, day in and day out. We're already doing this in partnership with health systems across the US, in Europe, in China, and we're seeing the power of population health in the marketplace right now. In the US, one of the five largest hospitals has been able to reduce ER admissions and hospital admissions by one-third for high-risk patients suffering from asthma, diabetes, heart failure, that is transformational change in the system, and that's the kind of thing that digital's making possible in healthcare. You've heard a lot today about digital twins, you'll hear more, that concept applies in healthcare as well. The digital twins allow us to mine data and improve performance at a machine level, so just like GE jet engines or turbines, RMRI machines and other systems, they also have digital twins. They reduce downtime by 30%. The machines talk to each other in the cloud and can predict when they're gonna need servicing. We did this at Houston Methodist Hospital in Texas using digital twins of their whole medical imaging fleet to reduce bottlenecks and free up capacity. And the doctors there were able to see an additional 3,000 patients per year. And that's just at one hospital in one city so imagine the productivity and access that can be created by applying this kind of digital technology around the world. Digital twins also enable us to improve performance, not just at an individual machine level, but at a network level. Taking a healthcare system in its totality, from admission to discharge, and really turning that into a data operation. We partnered with Johns Hopkins Hospital to build a NASA-like command center, feels like mission control, 5,500 square feet, two dozen staff around 24-7. We built digital twins of all of Hopkins' 2,000 patient pathways through the hospital, and then tested millions of different simulations using that. And from that, we were able to create a wall of analytics that now shows custom real-time predictive analytics that triggers the staff there to take certain actions. The results of this command center have truly been a giant leap for healthcare. So Hopkins now is accepting patients 60% faster than before, matching ER patients with open beds 30% faster, and even predicting perfect storms where they can see bottlenecks coming and prevent them before they ever happen. And before Johns Hopkins led the way on this, there was nothing like this command center in the world. And now we're working with major hospital systems around the globe to develop similar capabilities. So we've talked about how digital improves healthcare at a patient level, and how digital also improves the efficiency of care providers everywhere. What really brings this all together is the cloud. So from Vosworks and Pop Health, NASA-like command centers, the cloud connects people, data, and machines. This is especially of interest to leading academics and researchers. They value this capability because it enables them to tap into our network of hospitals and doctors and data, as well as to collaborate with us on powerful applications that can really change patient care. And that brings me to a very exciting and, and hometown announcement uh, that I'm proud to make. Together with the University of California, San Francisco, we're developing a set of deep learning applications that will spot pathologies and flag them for doctors who can respond faster and more effectively. And let me just give you an example of how this works. 
Every year in the United States, 70 million patients get chest x-rays to look for lung disorders, including very serious ones like collapsed lungs. The challenge is that 85% of these x-rays are normal. So that requires radiologists to work through stacks and stacks of films before getting to the patients truly in need. So the deep learning algorithm we're developing with UCSF, it's going to teach machines to know the difference between normal and abnormal x-rays so that doctors can more quickly treat and focus on patients with life-threatening conditions. This is going to help great hospitals like UCSF get even better, but its most important application might be 9,000 miles away, where someone in sub-Saharan Africa also gets an x-ray scan. His doctor is not a specialist. His hospital is not UCSF. Until now, he's had no hope of access to the same level of expert care that, frankly, we take for granted here in San Francisco. Until now. With this new collaboration with UCSF and the cloud, we can digitally transport the clinical knowledge that can save lives, bringing it to patients where they live, when they need it. And this lung app that we have with UCSF is just the first of many to come. In addition to other partnership apps that we're developing, this cloud provides an infrastructure for other developers to deliver high-impact healthcare applications. So by 2020, we see a world where there'll be hundreds of apps in our cloud, enabling insights that'll address multiple disease states and really transforming healthcare. So this merger of clinical science and minds and machines, it really launches us into a new era for healthcare. It's taking the creativity of the human mind and multiplying it by data and analytics that were never possible before the cloud. That's the future of what we're building at GE Healthcare right now. It's a better future. It's a better future for your family, for my family, and for every person on the planet. It's a digital future. And we could not be more excited about the possibilities nor more confident in the road ahead. So thank you very much.